This week, Drew and I interview Alec Rubin and Bradley Rubin. Growing up, they both knew that one day they would join Alec Bradley Cigar Company as second-generation cigar makers. Well, that time has certainly come. And in this episode, they get to tell their story. Stogie Geeks, after this interview, I want you to go to alecandbradley.com. Check them out. Check out their brands. They got some more coming. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about their blends and how they entered the market. And they're going to tell their story. And then later on in the show, the stick of the week is the Placencia Cosecha 146. The exact size I had was the Monte Carlo. It's a 6x58. We're going to have break it down in front of the Stogies of the Week as well. Stogie Geeks, episode 328, starts right now. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Hosempa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. And- Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. What's up, Stogie Geeks? This is episode 328. I am your host, Joe Zempa. Privilege and an honor to be here. I am joined remotely from the little doc here from Texas. Drew, what up? Hey, what's going on, Joe? Just hanging out I'm, over here in North. Just hanging out over here in Dallas, Texas, man. Just uh, you know, they opened up the floodgates over here, 25% across the board. So uh, I'm gonna let these people go out and breathe the fresh air and and hopefully not contaminate the rest of the uh, others that are healthy. But uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait this out until June. I feel, and uh, you know, stay healthy in that in that regard. So, other than that, man, I'm looking forward to uh, you know speaking with Alec and Bradley. These guys, you know, they've been on our radar for a while, and uh, it's it's exciting that they're here. Absolutely. With further ado, this week Drew and I have a chance to interview Alec and Bradley Rubin from Alec and Bradley. And I want you to go to alecandbradley.com after this episode and check out some of their brands. They got some super cool stuff. They have some sticks out on the market now. I am enjoying right now the Blind Faith. I really enjoy this stick. I've had the Gatekeeper as well. They got a new stick coming up. We're going to talk about some of that. But before uh, we start all their process and how they got started, I want to introduce, I guess we got to go Alec first. Just A, right? Alec, welcome to Stogie Geeks. How are you? Earth. Joe, Drew, thank you so much for having us on. Um, we've been, you know, this has been a long time coming, and we're excited to be here. Mm, absolutely. Do they always introduce you first? I, I, I was going to go the other way, but uh, do, do you always get introduced first when you guys go to events or do stuff, or what? How does that work? He always gets introduced yeah, first. Yeah, I generally get. Well, <laughs> I, I... <laughs> alphabetically. <laughs> Nice. Natural hey, flow. I I have a brother too, so we're gonna we're certainly gonna have a brother conversation. Uh, oh yeah. As you guys are here. That being said, I also want to introduce Bradley. Thank you. Thank you. What's Dr- up, man? Drew Welcome to Joe for Geeks. having me. I'm sure most people say Joe and Drew. I'm gonna go with Drew first. Thank you, Drew yeah, and Joe, you for having us on. There you go. I actually go with Drew and I, like on the website, like Drew there and whatnot. Even though host or co-host, I to me. To me, it's all equal, right? If we some sometimes we we have three hosts, sometimes we have four. Most of the time, it's usually us two. Um, you know, I, I I to me, it's a round table. You know what I mean? But it's just I guess it, you know we as cigar uh, enthusiasts, as stogie geeks, we've been saying Alec Bradley 
for years in that order, not Bradley Alec. <laughs> so um, that's a brand problem. So whoever introduces your brother first, that's a marketing and brand and positioning <laughs> issue for sure. But uh, it's, a, it's a personal well, issue for me. I mean, a- <laughs> I've been I've been hearing this for for 23 years, 24 years now. I mean, I, I want my name to be first every once in a while. Well, I'll tell you what, if you hey, want to come back, if you want to come back on uh, episode 329 of Stogie Geeks, we can we can continue the interview and do a two part series. I'll introduce you first. <laughs> I like that. I like that. So what's what's the what's the age difference between you all? Three, three years. years, three years. Okay. Mm. No kidding. No, three years. There's 10 years between me and my brother, which is which is kind of cool. I mean, I'm 45 now. He's 35. Uh, you know, it's, 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 uh, if it was a little bit, cl- we are close is no question, but, um, you know, if it was a little bit closer, uh, it, it was, it, 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 I'm sure you guys would probably argue more. So me, see me, my, see me, my brother don't argue as much. Number one, because I don't work with him, uh, <laughs> which, which I'm sure there, but you know, you guys got to obviously find that balance, uh, growing up, I'm sure. Uh, it was very interesting for you guys, uh, considering, you know, uh, who your father was in the cigar industry, uh, and you know, what your father's position is with that company, how he started the company, the, the various brands that he rolls out under his umbrella and the stuff that gets done under his factory and all of that stuff as well. So that must've been fascinating for for you two to kind of watch that take take us through 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 what it was like when when you were little and um kind of like what was that like and then also if if you could when was your aha moment uh and it might have come came at the same time for you when did you guys decide like like we want to be second generation cigar makers brad you want to start yeah, so, I want Bradley to go first because he never goes first, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, growing up, it was something that we were never really around. Um, you know, we got to we got to see him grow as as a person and, and throughout his career, but um, we never were really in the cigar shops or too much around uh, the community itself. But we were always around the business and the people within within Alec Bradley. So Alec and I used to go to the sales meetings and help in the office and pack boxes over the summer when we were little. So we were, we were around it, but we never knew so much about the industry itself. Um, you know, Alec started getting more into it as soon as he turned 18. I know he started working, um, working a little bit, you know, part time. So he was around it a lot earlier than me. Um, but my, my aha moment was, it probably didn't come until, a lot later than expected was when I graduated college. Um, Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure what I was going to do after graduation. So I, I wanted to to take the time to explore a little bit, see if there was going to be something else out there for me. Um, My family sure didn't know that I wanted to join the business, but I I kind of reflected and thought about what Alec Bradley has, has given me growing up and seeing my name on the company is uh, pretty, sorry, pretty special. So, I just want to be able to to do what my father has done for me and Alec in some sort of capacity. If if or whenever I have kids, if they decide they want to join this industry too, um, you know, hopefully I, you know, me and Alec don't screw this up, and uh, we can have the possibility of passing it down to to our future children. Right, right, right. Um, how about you? Uh, well, well, well. Now that we have Bradley, but be, be, before we get to Alec, it'd be easier this way. Um, What's your job role within the company now? I know that uh, from watching various interviews and stuff like that, you guys kind of split duties, which I think is smart. But uh, Bradley, what's your current role and position? What what are kind of your focuses now from the day-to-day operations of your company? Uh, so my main focus is our social media. Um, that's That's my main focus. And then marketing is obviously a part of that. So marketing social media is, is my main responsibility. And then now that Alec and I are both working, um, and my father is taking less time to travel, we've started to travel a lot more, have people get to know who we are. Um, and hopefully learn a little bit that 
Alec Bradley is two different people and not, not the name of, of our father. Yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 It, it, uh, um, that, that will, that will come, um, for sure. Um, I think your methodology and delivery from your first two sticks and your upcoming stick that kind of has a marketing story to that. And we're going to get to that, uh, Mm -hmm. uh, today for sure. Um, and you, and you can take us through that, but, uh, Alec, what you started right when you were 18, take us through that as well. And then, um, position into your roles of the company. Do you want me to go back to uh, when we were growing up in the industry as well, or kind of skip that part a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Go for it. Yeah, okay. Um, So growing up in the industry, like my brother said, we weren't really around, you know, being in stores with my father, you know, not being 18, but we did spend a lot of time with him in the office helping out. And uh, it it was very interesting for us growing up because tobacco was such a dirty word for so long. And they would have mm. all these anti-tobacco campaigns in school. And it was kind of like a weird thing telling people what our father did. But we were always extremely proud of him. He always told us how proud he was of what he did because he got to do what he loved. And so that was like always a little bit of a controversial issue um, between, you know, amongst you know friends and school and all that stuff. But we were always super proud of what he did. And we, we loved that he enjoyed what he did, which was fantastic and then um for my aha moment because i really started getting into cigars you know the moment i turned 18 i think i knew within that first year of smoking that this is what i wanted to do for the Mm. rest of my life i was spending way too much money in cigar shops way too much time in cigar shops and i think i was taking my laptop to cigar shops while i was in college and sitting there all day and doing my work instead of you know staying at home and sitting there and doing it. But I just, I knew from a very, uh, you know, very young age that this is what I wanted to do. And then my role within the company, if I had to pick two things would probably be brand development and, uh, sales is probably what I, the two things that I do most. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. Um, your 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 story is is very similar to a lot of cigar enthusiasts that are out there. You know, they 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 fall in love with with the with a cigar shop or the concept of a cigar shop. You know, I was the same way in college when I was um, I graduated college in 1998, right? So back in the late 90s, you know, I'm I'm rocking a Hoyo de Monterey Excalibur number one doing my political science work in a cigar shop, writing papers, exactly. doing that, you know, and just kind of, you know, wouldn't, I'd go to the study lounge if we had group assignments and all of that. And then they'd be like, Oh, you want to continue? I'm like, yeah. Uh, you want to go to a cigar shop? I'm like, what? And I'm like, yeah. Like, you know, they're like All right. some of them came, some of them didn't, you know, some of them came and w- w- we are still friends now since then. And then others, you know, I met him on campus and then I would immediately just run back to the cigar shop. And quite frankly, even even today, that concept doesn't end for me. Right. It's like, you know, uh, yeah. with with covid and all that stuff, you know, I, I have, um, you know, working from home and sometimes that can be a challenge with a little one. And I find myself still just going to an empty cigar shop that's closed, taking a cigar, boom, 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 and just, you know, hanging in a cigar shop. Not not every day now, of course. Uh, usually about once a week, but just just to kind of you know, it it to me it's like a uh, it's like a great sanctuary. Get to meet some super cool people. Obviously, I've done some business out of the Scott shops and all that stuff. So yeah, I I like you fell in love with with the whole cigar shop thing for sure, definitely. And yeah, I think I get, brand I get it. brand deve- Excuse me. I, I was just gonna say I get it. There's something that's so cool about being able to walk into a cigar shop and know nobody and walk out with four friends by the end of, you know, three hours. And that's what I think just made me fall in love with the concept of cigars and cigar shops and the whole culture. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like I remember back in the glory days when, um, Alec Bradley had an event with the original Tempest. Like we actually got to go to an event here locally in Rhode Island and, they had a roller roll as the actual Tempest blend. You know what I mean? That was a way back in the day promotion. I don't even, it was 
probably in in 99 or 2000 maybe 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 2003 all the years yeah. blend when you get to 40 don't worry you guys will get there someday <laughs> right <laughs> right true all the all the yeah. years blend they, they all blend together you know but you know and, and and i remember saying like wow like it's super cool man like we could we got this roller and we have to get to see the cigar and, and 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 she told us all about it and it was super cool and then and then like you know you're meeting some friends and having some cocktails and and doing that there and like i said it's it's just it's just one of those cultures that that um it's just such an integral part of my, my life as well, uh, for sure. Yeah. You know, so I could see, I could see where that would happen. Brand development. Now, I want to spend so, a little bit of time on this because uh, take us through your gatekeeper and your blind faith. Uh, what, my first exposure as a consumer to the blind faith was uh, early September of last year. I went to a cigar shop in Fort Lauderdale. I did Stogie Geeks remotely there, and I ran into and, – and I remember just having the box kind of catch my eye of the blind faith, and I sat there and I stared at it. Now, yeah. as you know, brand development, shelf talk is all of that is very, very important. But what I like about your positioning and where I like is where I think you guys are going is that you're looking for – to carve your own path, if you will. And you guys are not, you know, I'm sure you could have easily just stuck underneath your father, done that there, continued that. But you guys are really trying to define yourselves. Take us through that effort. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think Bradley needs to answer this one. Yeah, there is, Joe, there's something important that you said in, in that sentence was that you stopped and stared at the box and you just looked at it for a while. Um, that's something that Alec and I are, are always striving for is that we want our artwork to, to speak to us and, and have people know who we are and the artwork that we like and our interests and what our cigar preferences are. So the goal is, is to have people know us, um, and how we're a little bit different within the Alec Bradley company itself. So with blind faith, we wanted something that, that spoke to the, you know, the beginning of our of our journey, not with just within the industry, but our, our lives. So if you look at the box, it's got kind of an old school TV um, as this, this guy's head and it has the old SMPTE color bars that you see on, on TV. And that was something that we grew up with uh, in the nineties. So we wanted something that not just spoke to us, but something that we knew, um, you know, people older than us would also remember and mm -hmm. in the background of that, there's the, um, the old test check That's that right. has like the wheels on the on the side and the corners, and then the old Indian head. So oh, we yeah. wanted, yep. yeah, we wanted something that people would ulti ultimately remember and look back as kind of a throwback, and and that was really something that we grew up with uh, in in the '90s. Um, so the you know the point of the Alec and Bradley stuff is not just so people understand that. You know, Alec Bradley is named after me and my brother, but have people know who we are, um, what we like, and, and carve our own path within this industry. Mm -hmm. Have you guys gone to uh, – and, and, and I apologize for, for my ignorance here. Uh, I don't believe that podcasts should be at major trade shows. It's just, it's just you know, if, if we're a good podcast and we speak to people throughout the year – that really should be saved for the retailers, but that, but, but, but that's my own business opinion, uh, there. Um, you know, because I think that there is a special relationship at a trade show, having attended, uh, trade shows in the cybersecurity field, you know, there's a special relationship between a vendor and the purpose of the actual trade show. Uh, when you guys, have you guys been to any of the major trade shows and, um, are you able to define that distance from your father in that company or are they always like, ah, oh, it's Alan's kids. And, and then you're gonna, you're gonna go, Whoa, wait a minute. Yeah, we are. But can we have a conversation? Like, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of that, especially for some of the old vendors that have dealt with your father year after year or throughout all the, all of these years. Um, for me, I started going to the trade shows, uh, to IPCPR now PCA since I was 18. 
And mm-hmm. at first, it was 100% Alan's kid all the way. For sure. Probably until the last, yeah, two years. So I'm about, I'm turning 28 right in um, the next few days. But so 10, 10 years later, I'm finally, you know, get you know getting that recognition of just being alec versus alan's kid Mm -hmm. yep and the reason why i asked that question is outside of stogie geeks i have an advisory services for my company as well and i've dealt with second and third generation owners um one of my most popular and best clients is a third generation and, you know, when they taken over the company and dad never showed up uh, because he retired, it took him about, honestly, about 10 years, you know, and they were saying, oh, you're not running this like your father, this, that, and the other thing. So I think it's a very smart move off the bat, business-wise, that you guys are setting the record straight, saying, listen, these are going to be our sticks, this is going to be our brand, and this is going to be what we represent. And by the way, if you enjoy who the company is named after you can still enjoy my father's stuff and and you know there's no reason why that you can't enjoy two companies but i'm sure 10 years i can tell that that was a hot felt 10 years for you because you wanted to carve your own path and and get out there and do your own thing for sure you know i actually i actually have to thank bradley for that because um it was really his idea to uh start alec and bradley and my father had always said to us you can either be Alan Rubin's kids, or you can be separate, you know, Alec and Bradley within this industry. And it's your job to figure out how to make that happen if that's what you want. And Bradley came to me with the idea of coming up with our, you know, own company within the company. And if we didn't do that, I think we'd still just be considered Alan's kids. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's a good, it's, it's a great move on, on, on your part too because it gives you your own identity you know uh one thing i've often said to to my client getting back to my story is that you know he still lives under the identity of when his father started the company and did that there and 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 i don't think that that's going to go away um you know uh, especially because of the industry that it's in this industry um the fact that so far you have two blends you have another one that's scheduled to come out um, the fact that you're defining stories and character stories about what the blend is representing, what the banding, what the positioning of the product is represented, how it's describing your path and all of that stuff, uh, I think it's, a, it's, it's definitely a well-played move for sure. Thank you. Well, you've definitely been paying attention then and because you've got exactly what we've been trying to do, do with this. So thank you very much. No, and then it's the honest the truth because when I first saw the Blind Faith and I saw the Alec and the Ampersand Bradley, and then uh, probably about two weeks later, I just happened to connect with the local Alec Bradley rep here in the Northeast, John. I ran into him, and then he handed me a bunch of sticks, and we were talking and whatnot. He's like, yeah, try these. They're new. And then he goes, oh, I'm going to put you in t- touch with your marketing guy, Jonathan. I said, oh, cool. I was like, oh, Awesome. And so he did, and Jonathan came on the show, and I asked him, I says, you know, what's up with the ampersand? And he's like, oh, that's the – because I didn't know. You know what I mean? Like I, I didn't know. I, I don't – you know, I – usually the, the email goes off. People want an interview. where I, I go through the motions that way. I don't go out and seek interviews, um, you know, for that. And so I was like, oh, wow, like they're, they're, they're coming out with that. And the first thing that popped in my head way back in September – was like, wow, they have to really come up with some super cool sticks to really define their own path. That's all. You know? And yeah, we, we really find it, it's a two part process with this. It's not just the artwork or just the blend, it, it really has to be both together. And our goal is always to tell a story and what we're doing. And yeah. Bradley, when it, comes, when it comes to coming up with the concept for the project, is spectacular i think he killed it on blind faith he killed it on gatekeeper and then he kind of sends me out to central america to figure out the blend that represents that project and how we're trying to do something different from the out the core alec bradley portfolio to really show on both ends that we're doing something just completely different from the main company Mm -hmm. smart move smart move drew you have a question 
Yeah, no, yes. Uh, so I was going to ask. So the, the dynamic of working together, how how is that on a day to day basis? Or I don't know. What do you guys meet up like? What every day of the week? You guys meet up a couple days a week. Well, how does that dynamic work together with you guys? Our our offices are right next to each other. Uh, there's there's even a, a hole that's cut out that they're basically connected. Um, so <laughs> awesome. We we're we're with each other every day. Um, but the that. It, Dynamic is a is definitely a brother dynamic. We definitely uh, get on each other's nerves and we argue, and we have to learn. We're still learning how to how to separate, you know, family and, and the business because it's it's natural to to sure. fight with a brother. Um, so, okay. you know, we we learn and we grow, and we start to figure things out. But it's it's kind of worked a little bit in our in our favor when it comes to releasing our two cigars because we're, we're both not really willing to, to give up so much on what we want. And when we do start to pick away at the things that we're willing to give up, I think we've, it, it's helped us create a better cigar and better packaging and, and whole, you know, product um, that we can release to the market and be very proud of. Yeah. So I, I, I'm assuming that the, the passions are, I mean, the passions are there for sure. And, and so when you guys get into these discussions, uh is it kind of a listed you know do you guys list them down you know i mean how does that i mean pretty much explain that part but i mean is it because like with me and my brother i mean we 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 can go we we throw ideas at each other and then you know sometimes we break out the nerf guns and shoot each other a couple times and then go back into our (laughs) offices and then and then hash it out and then and then but it shows passion uh but at the same time uh cohesiveness and what you guys are doing uh is that Pretty, pretty much to be honest yeah. with you because bradley and i are both so passionate about this uh for the for, i would say for the first year when bradley started working here we were at each other's throats constantly and it wasn't till we started alec and bradley and started on the blind faith project that yeah. things got easier because we were able to separate uh responsibilities that made sense for both of us to basically not kill each other <laughs> Yeah. I could see that. If I started a cigar company with my brother, he would want to. Uh, he he would he would say, "You've obviously spent more time in this industry. Uh, I used my cigar resume. I was a rep uh, for nine months. I said the road's not for me. Uh, even though I'm really good at sales, <laughs> I was like the road's not for me. Uh, pre that, I did own a cigar shop here in the Providence Metro." That got merged, and it now the cigar shop that it merged to is still in existence today. So that's kind of cool. That was late 90s to about 2002. Um, so it was just post the boom uh, there. Uh, you know, I've, I've done uh, – I currently in my uh, business, I'm actually part of like an entrepreneur in residence for a pipe tobacco company. Um and helping them with their creation. And again, that was very, very difficult for me and for my client because my client bought it from the original granddaughter who's like 88 years old. So it's the Wilkie Pipe Tobacco Company. So so it's like, again, it's been in their family from the granddaughter, and now it gets passed to this guy named John, and he had to continue the tradition, and all of that stuff. Some of the, the the pipe tobacco blends date back to the old Abercrombie and Finch store, which I found amazing. I was like, is this Abercrombie and Finch like like our Abercrombie and Finch? Like, you know, our modern day. Like, really? Like, they, they had tobacco products back in the day? It was like, yeah, man, they were a department store. And I'm like, that's crazy, right? So uh-huh. it was, I was like, I got to pull up like these old history archives and all of that. Point of the story is that he had to break away and assure the group of consumers who seek this product that the family carefully cascaded all of the blends over to this new owner. And then, Oh, by the way, you're not going to call an 88 year old person and, um, you know, take your order. It's going to be online. (laughs) And so, so there was a little bit of a learning curve challenge for him to kind of scoop all of that audience and whatnot. So, so when I talk to you about the separation in there, you know, I'm talking to you from heartfelt experience where I've advised 
companies in the past, both in and out of the industry, not so much the, the cigar industry, but at least the tobacco industry for that. Yeah. And, and so, you know, I'm very, I'm very, um, you know, uh, aware of that huge hurdle, but I think you guys are doing a phenomenal job. And now with the uh, tour that you've been going on with all of these interviews where, you know, and it's probably just a component of time, right? You know, time slowed down for a bunch of us where now you have a chance to do a bunch of these interviews on the podcast or on the, the Facebook lives of the world and all of that stuff uh, to kind of tell your story. Yeah, I mean, you be, before, you know, COVID-19, Alec and I were both ready to get on the road and be traveling, mm. you know. That was my next question before we get oh. into some of the new stuff. Okay. Um, have you guys done any events pre-COVID-19 together, and, and what was the response to that? Uh, Alec and I have done very few events together, actually, because we feel mm. we can accomplish the most by dividing and conquering. Um, but we've done a, a handful, I would say maybe two or three f at the most, uh, they've gone well, uh, it, it allows us, you know, the opportunity to explain what we're trying to do. And Alec and I get to play off of each other, which is a lot of fun. And people get to see us, us, you know, go at each other a little bit, which is, is really how we are. Um, so we try not to, to hide that from, from our consumers. We're, we're brothers. So it's it's fun when we get to do events together but uh we usually are are separate and uh trying to you know see as many people and visit as many places as we can to reach out to the most people mm -hmm. I, could, awesome. I could not have said that any better i was going to say that basically the same exact thing that brad just said uh the only time that we really travel to do events with you know together is, it's been less than a handful of times uh and other than that if the event is in florida we're probably both there just because we can both drive there. But I was actually uh, on a trip when this whole COVID-19 really hit the States and I actually had to fly back early. Mm. Where, uh, where were you? I was in San Francisco oh. <laughs> wow. when this yeah, all went down. Wow. Well, I started in, I started in Cleveland, but I, I, I think I flew into Cleveland and flew out of Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the gatekeeper came out first, correct? Second. Or did they? Oh, the blind second. Faith. Yeah. Blind faith. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Came cool. out first. So, so then we'll uh, take us through. So the blind faith came out first. You got the blind faith. You got the gatekeeper, and then Drew wants to spend a little time asking about this new stick that's coming up, and then obviously the 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 big question is, when do you release it? What was the original plan? Has that changed for you with all of these restrictions or how are you guys creatively going to get past all of these restrictions that we now have on us? So I guess we'll start at gatekeeper, right? Let's do it. Um, all right. So gatekeeper was our, our follow up to blind faith. Uh, we, for Alec and Bradley, like we kind of said before, we, we want to do something that's a little bit different than what Alec Bradley uh, is accustomed to. So, Alec Bradley doesn't really make any cigars in the Dominican Republic. So we're, we and Alec kind of looked at each other and said, hey, let's do something in, in the DR and mm. then try to figure out who are we going to do this with. And Alec and I both admire Ernesto Perez Carrillo uh, extremely. I mean, he's been doing this for probably, you know, longer than Alec and I have both been alive combined. Uh, so we kind of felt like there was no one better. And Ernesto was ecstatic to do this project with us. So Gatekeeper, uh, the story and brand is really an homage to Ernesto. Um, you know, I, I always saw Ernesto as, before I met him, this, this scary, grumpy old man uh, who looks like he never smiles. And so I saw Ernesto as, as the Gatekeeper, you know, when, when we finish this project and people get to try it and love it, uh, he'll open up the gates for us basically. And, lead us on a new path uh, and we'll see where that takes us. So it's really a um, kind of gothic dark. If you see the band, it's Medusa's head being, being held and blood yep. spilling out. And uh, yeah. it's just this, this crazy brand that is really based on, on Ernesto and, and how legendary he is. 
So he, uh, you know, really knocked the park or knocked the ball out of the park with the, uh, with the cigar itself. And it seems like people have been enjoying it a lot. Yeah. Um, choice and size. I'm a, I'm a, if it's gatekeeper, I'm a fan of the Robusto. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I got I got the robusto. Uh, I got the robusto on deck after I'm doing the blind faith. Now I like the blind. I like the blind faith. Uh, 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 to me, it's a little bit more biteier for me. Um, mm. It's it's got uh, the the smoke content kind of lingers on my palate just a little bit more than the gatekeeper. Yeah, what's what's cool on gatekeeper <clears throat> is that Ernesto is really known for being kind of the king of big ring gauge with his with the inch. Um, yeah. But mm. we have it. We have it in a Corona, which Ernesto does very few of, um, and a lot of people seem to have been enjoying the Corona the most. I saw mm. that. Mm-hmm. I have yeah, not. So I have not had the Corona. I have not. The have to, I'll have to. have to seek that out for sure. I got that box on my desk. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Uh, nice. So you were talking about the blind faith versus the gatekeeper. And when we were blending the blind faith, Brad will tell you, he wanted, he wanted something specifically that either people loved or hated, but there wasn't anything in between. Uh, So we went for something that was really, really going to bring, I guess, a a higher strength to the cigar while maintaining a certain level of flavor. Because if you smoke Alec Bradley cigars, you know that we are always flavor first. And then strength second. So mm-hmm. with that cigar, we want we want to push the boundaries with the flavor, and still bring in the strength. Because as you add flavor, you tend to lose strength, and when you add yeah. strength, you lose flavor. So we wanted this perfect combination between the two, which led to a really beefy cigar having I think all the fillers are Ligeros or Maduros, which is yeah. extremely hard to blend. It's not very common, and so that's what we went for with that cigar, and when we knew we were coming out with our second one, we knew we needed something that was going to be on the exact opposite end of the scale. Something to, to kind of show off that we can do um, things in different ranges. So that's why the gatekeeper is a little bit more medium. It might have that shorter, a little bit of a, that's not really a shorter finish, but just a lighter finish. And we just wanted to really uh, differentiate between the two blends. Mm. What's this next one that you're trying to come up with? Or is that ready to is that ready to rock in 2020? So uh, you, you brought up before in, in the question about the new brand and when is it going to to be released? So we were planning uh, some sort of time in mid May to the end of May for this release, um, but with the factories closing down um, and some some packaging changes, it's kind of put us uh, set back for uh, you know kind of the unforeseeable future. We don't know exactly when it's going to be released. Um, if there happens to be a trade show still, then we hope to release it then. But if not, we're still, you know, still working on it, trying to figure out what the fourth size, maybe the fifth size as well is going to be. So, um, you know, TBD on, on when the release is. Um, but but the, you guys the have a concept. Of- you guys have mm-hmm. a concept of that, right? Of what it's the wrapper binder filler. Uh, you have a name, um, yeah. you know, uh, e- e- the trade, sh- you know, what's interesting. You, you, you brought up a great point, right? With, in regards to quote unquote, the trade show, right? What would happen all the time historically here on Stogie Geeks or any cigar media is around that May time frame, we get bombarded with all the press releases from all the companies. Every every day there's a press release of a company in our email and all of that stuff that all the different marketing departments from different brands send us, and then we pick it up, talk about it, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And May had always been like that official go-to, right, because of the trade show. And now this year, like, okay, I'm slated to go to a trade show in Vegas in the cybersecurity company uh in august early august i think it's august 8th off the top of my head right and that's still a maybe right we don't know but even my thought business wise is even if that happens it's probably going to be sparsely attended right even in that cybersecurity company definitely with with uh ipcpr going to pca and all that entails and what they were trying to accomplish and what they're still trying to accomplish there 
Some companies have bailed out, some have not, et cetera, et cetera. We're not going to get into that. Um, I've already said my piece on that and gotten a bunch of hate email and some Facebook hate speech from other <laughs> podcast people, but uh, that's cool. Uh, it means I'm doing my job. So, um, <laughs> you know, so, 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 so that being said, like, I wonder if post COVID, the structure of moving forward with the release of blends um, is going to change that annual rotation of the constantly new stuff. Uh, I think yeah. it definitely might. We like, like, like Brad said, we were planning on releasing in May, and now we're hoping for a trade show release. Right. Actually, we were we were hoping for for mid April originally, and then you know we had to shut down the factories. We didn't have an option. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about the name of the stick and concept of the stick, or you want to keep us wait, 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 wait in wait. with anticipation? What do you want to do? Oh, no, <laughs> we, want to talk, we want to talk about it for sure. Because I'm, wait, 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 I'm all right. Well, well, go ahead, Drew. Well, no, yeah. no, no. I just, I just want to wow these guys. So I'm going to let you know that uh, when I heard when I when I read the name, I know it's a Japanese name, and what the meaning of it. I'm going to show off here a little bit because I do my homework. So, uh, which you know the name. Uh, Kintsugi, which means golden journey or golden rege uh, rejoining. Uh, I so when I when I read that and I went and looked it up and I did my homework, uh, you know, going back to the other two sticks, I'm like, yeah, these guys are definitely on journey for sure because there's a lot of thought that it has that that's been put behind your third offering coming up soon, and. I just wanted to let you guys know that, you know, uh, I know our, our listeners, um, people that I talk to at my lounge, uh, you know, that, you know, that, you know, we, we have a, a, a great, you know, Alec Bradley, Alec and Bradley uh, uh, facings on our shelves. And and so uh, I started telling him, I said, yeah, there's there's another stick coming out. And, you know, it's uh, and it's within the lines of of the other two sticks. Just just wanted to touch on that a little bit and just kind of, you know. Show off a little bit. <laughs> I, love, I love that. I love, I love that that you know, you know, the meaning of kintsugi. Um, kintsugi. You know, it's, it's cool that that you did your research and it makes me very, very happy. Um, so to expand on it a little more uh, for the people watching, kintsugi is is basically the piecing back together of of broken pottery. So you know, plates yes. and bowls and and vases, and the the cracks um, is basically um, put back together with gold lacquer. So when you have the final piece again, gold, cra uh, gold cracks show through, uh, the breaks and yeah. the Japanese meaning uh, behind it is that there's beauty in the imperfections. And so we kind of, um, use that as a metaphor to what's been going on within, within the industry. And, you know, I know Joe didn't really want to talk about, um, you know, what happened with PCA, but we, you know, had a very, um, broken industry not everyone's on the same page um between pca and then everything going on with the fda so we're all very separate and we're trying to figure out what is the gold lacquer that pieces the industry back together and you know ultimately it's about the cigar it's about us all enjoying cigars and, and being a community but weirdly enough with COVID 19 happening and all of us turning to you know, virtual hearths and Zoom and Instagram Live and whatever platform that that you decide to use has brought the industry a lot closer together in this, you know, past month or two months. Um, so, you know, while the gold lacquer is the cigar, um, this pandemic has has truly been what's brought this industry a lot closer together. Oh, yeah. You bring up fascinating points about PCA and merge IPCPR and when they wanted to have a consumer day and all that and all of that there um the industry is fragmented and and with especially with the FDA I've been having the uh FDA conversation for five years now uh three years on Stogie Geeks and two years uh my I had a cigar radio show on terrestrial radio that you could call in it was more like a Friday afternoon drive happy hour show, and we discussed a lot of uh, interviews, and we would interview people like yourselves on the show, 
and all of that stuff. They would call in and, and do all of that there. Or if they were doing an event here in Rhode Island, they would come to the studio into the radio station and, and, and we cut up a show and, and do that there. So I've been having that, uh, that FDA conversation for a while now. And it really does need to come together uh, for sure. Um, you know, we should probably, uh, and one of the things that you might want to do as second generation there is um, I want to spend some time pivoting to the future of the industry. Uh, even with us dealing with COVID, we are going to be unfortunately dealing with the repercussions of COVID for at least five to 20 years in some sort of respects, you know, regulation, different way of doing business. I want to spin it to a positive, you know, hopefully we won't be under quarantine for the next five years, but again, you know, uh, there will be a different life as we know it going into a restaurant, going into a crowded arena to see a show or a concert or big parades, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, when it comes together and, and, and it really needs to come together and be defined, um, what do you guys hope for the future of the industry? And you can weave in and out of COVID, you know, because, you know, you guys are young enough and let's face it, like, you know, I'm in my forties. Uh, I'll probably be doing story geeks for another 10 years or so. Uh, there might be another version of me somewhere. Who's going to take over another version of Drew 10 years from now, whichever, um, you know, not saying that 50 is a cutoff, but you know what I'm saying? You know, <laughs> people might get sick and tired of hearing me for freaking 14 years, you know. Um, but, you know, we, where do you guys see the, the industry going um, and, and what fascinates you guys being at such a young age? I remember being in my career field in my 20s. And being excited about the field and excited about my contributions that I could take in the field. What do you guys see for the future of the industry? I think that's, that's a, it's a good question, but a tough question because this industry has been around for so long that there's been there's, there's very little innovation to be, like, to be seen within this industry because it just has such a rich culture and a history. So I'm, I'm, quite curious to see where the industry leads in the next 10, 20, up, you know, 50 years, because what's really going to change in terms of the tobacco? I think things that have changed over the years are how events are done, um, how tobacconists handle themselves, or what these, sort, what these retailers look like uh, and the experience that they provide. Um, and I know there's been even just changes over, you know, over the years, you know, since Ernesto was making cigars in Miami, so now, you know, he sold the Gloria Cubana and now he has, you know, uh, E.T. Carrillo. And there's just, there's so many little intri like intricate things that have happened over the years. It's, like I said, the way that events are done and swag and getting to meet the manufacturers in person. I'm just, I'm pretty curious myself as to what's going to happen in the, in the next 50 years. So yeah. to, to go on a separate, on a little bit different view, um, you know, the people who have been affected most are brick and mortar stores. And it's the shop owners that have been selling cigars for decades that maybe, you know, they don't know how to adapt to something like this. Um, you know, they may have old technology. They don't, they don't ship. Um, you know, they're not as, they don't do anything online in terms of social media and trying to promote their, their store. You know, people may not know if they're open. So, you know, not looking too far in the future, but, but, you know, maybe just a year out, I hope that some of these shop owners that have been sticking to what they've been doing for the past 20, 30 years, just start to try and update um, and try and, you know, pick up their social media, um, have people know, you know, what's coming in, what's on the shelves at all times, have people know what's in inventory. So, you know, they're not, they're not um, just saying, oh, the shop is closed. Um, or they don't have what I want. Maybe they do have the cigars that you want. So yeah. it, they got to, you know, start to figure out how to get with the times a little bit and, and having people know what's going on with their store at all times. Great points. Uh, I've often said to, to my clients, um, and I've lost some from this comment and I've kept some from this comment and it has nothing to do with COVID. It's, 
in any industry, you really need to innovate or die. Yep. And that's it. Lateral. Like that's lateral. It. It, that, that, that's it. Like you, you need regardless of FDA regulation potential going down there, uh, regardless of the PCA and the IPCPR mix and and where they're going. Um, you know, uh, there may be a really big call, cause for innovation to happen. And Alec brings up a great point of you know this is an old industry and. I've dealt with older industries outside of the cigar industry, and it's not easy to, to, to get them to pivot, but they really must innovate. Uh, the brick and mortars really need to, to innovate. I know here there's been a local movement of um, cigar shops going online, right, just from the curbside and doing that there. And I think it's great, right, because it, once they catch up with the intricacies of the site, and what the site can do, they can start to tag the meta tag in the field. So if they're doing a search for a specific cigar, now they can play against the big online retailers, you know, which I think is super important because everyone has their place in the market, right? You just got to define your space in the market. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Can, yeah. you, can you guys just hold on one second? My dad just came in and said my audio is bad, so I'm just going to switch my headphones real quick. Sure, sure, absolutely. Okay. So yeah, so um, you know, and 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 I, you know, unfortunately, it took COVID to push some of these brick and mortars to consider online. But now, I was even talking to some shop owners here in the Northeast that, you know, with COVID and they start to release restrictions um, that are going to be pending on either state, town, county, whichever. You know, now you might have to take some of your events outside when the weather's nice here in the Northeast. Good news is May is right here, right? May it's May first today, and and you know we can enjoy good weather until at least Halloween, right? And we can probably get creative when it comes to some of um, some of the events, social distancing while you still have events. Maybe shops would have to space out some chairs and do all of that, but they're going to really, really have to, to pivot or innovate um, the way. I love the, the curbside service for a lot of, you know, I can go on because if I'm paying with, with my card anyway, I can go to the site, pick the cigars I want, bing, bang, boom, tell them what time I'm going to be there, show up. Yeah, my name is Jose. Okay, cool. Here's your thing. Thanks, man. Peace. You know what I mean? I love it. Right? It's great, you know? Um, yeah. especially if I know what I want to get, but I think it's, it's going to push them in the right direction. The brick and mortar is a worried about inventory. And I get that you guys worry about inventory too. I'm sure it's on everyone's mind, but the supply chain is going to work its way out somehow, some way, right? Uh, most of the cigars, uh, here in the United States are sitting in a warehouse. And to my knowledge, there's a, a, a three to six month window uh, of inventory of of what we can get. Some brands are tougher to get than others. I know all of that stuff. I'm sure you guys have dealt with a ton of logistical nightmares. But you know, um, those are all uh, problems that we're all going to have to adapt to. And if the supply chain goes, you know, with this three months that we've been in, I think right now we're in the end of the beginning phase of COVID, right? So, you know, it's all, it's, it's different phases, right? However you want to label them. But I think we're at the, we're at the end of the beginning. We're going to start to release some of the quarantining. Hopefully the brick and mortars will get more traffic. Uh, I spoke to a local uh, cigar owner who talked about events and he's like, yeah, normally whenever we do a cigar event, we have 80 people. It's easy. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a two day event. And you pick the day and just space out the event. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's freaking genius. I'm like, that's for So now instead of 40, now if the number locally here becomes 20, then you have a three-day event or maybe a week event or whatever. Mm -hmm. And some people will, can go – some people go to the event because they like the deal, the quote-unquote, you know, whatever the, 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 the deal of the event is. But others might really want to meet the person as well. And I'm sure with social distance and all of that stuff, we, you've got to be innovative and make it happen. I don't know about plane rides, but it'd be pretty cool for you guys to now zoom in to a cigar shop, do a meeting yeah. like this with the patrons, and now you guys don't have to fly and everyone's safe 
everyone gets to quote unquote meet you. They can ask questions via Zoom or via Skype or whatever methodology they use. You can set up a, a Slack channel for the cigar shop. There's so many ways that they can preset questions and then have them have an opportunity to meet you guys without yeah, you guys we, we actually, actually flying to the actual event. We actually tested this out about a year ago, you know, prior to all this COVID stuff. And we did a Google Hangouts event with seven, it was the same owner, but seven different of his stores at one time. And it was a very interesting dynamic and it was a little bit strange, but now that we have, you know, people are now using Zoom and all these other different platforms, I definitely think that could happen. The one thing that just saddens me from all this is we're talking about ways to, you know, do events and all that. But like I mentioned earlier, the culture of a cigar shop is to be able to go in, sit down with a random group group of guys or girls that you've never met and just, you know, talk cigars, talk whatever it may be, whatever the, the discussion is in the room at the time, and just sure. walk out with a great experience and have made, you know, like I said, three or four new friends from that experience. And if that kind of goes away a little bit, that's going to be a really sad part of this culture. That's a good point, too. I mean, you know, for sure. Uh, but again, uh, y- y- you, this is the time that, that we live in. And hopefully, uh, you know, if, if the restrictions are 20 people in a room there, or whatever they may be, I'm not going to get logistical with, with, with the restrictions, but like, I agree, like having it open is going to be a challenge, but I think that the business owner and the brick and mortar and, and you guys and the innovation, uh, is going to come out of this. And I think that the industry as a whole, from what I've seen from these virtual events and all that stuff, I mean, I can't scroll down through Facebook or Twitter and hop on a, a freaking hearth. I mean, it, they're happening almost 24 hours. It's pretty crazy. Um, I got mixed feelings about the hearths. It is different for sure. But, you know, uh, life's going to be different as we know it. It's just, it just uh, hopefully we can get back to the times you talk about more sooner than later. Yeah. Absolutely. And, I, you know, I think before all this happened, I think we saw – uh, actually a shift towards brick and mortar that people wanted more than anything, the in lounge experience and be able to connect with people. Um, I think online business was probably going down and you just saw a major shift because of all this. And now everyone's views are different. So I, I think because the industry is, is tends to be older. Um, I think there is an older way of thinking and, and that, you know, we've been through stuff like this before you know, we'll, we'll always beat it out. Um, and that, you know, I can go back to my local cigar lounge and enjoy my life as it was two months ago. Um, so I think certain places, certain people, um, you know, when, when things, when there's less, uh, less restrictions and, and regulation on what's going on right now, and we all look back and be like, you know, COVID-19 is over people. I think for the most part, we'll just go back to, you know, what life was They're, they yeah. They may not see a difference. Uh, they may not, not practice social distancing. The, the lounges may not sanitize as much as they should um, just because, you know, it's a thing of the past and people aren't talking about it anymore. Mm, mm. What I've noticed too, is that um, I get emails uh, constantly from Stogie Geeks listeners uh, that say, Hey Joe, like, you know, you often talk about like the privilege to walk into a cigar shop and you know, uh, if you don't like who's at that cigar shop or that cigar shop's dead, you can jump in your car and go to another four. Right. Because believe me in Rhode Island, there's a ton of, I know, of, I know. I have, I have story geeks listeners that are like, I have never set foot in a cigar shop and talked about, I says, why have you been to a cigar shop? And they're like, cause the nearest one is an hour away. And and I yeah. order cigars online from the bigger retailers, and I you know, and then whenever you mention sticks on on your sticks of the week, I'm always hunting and pecking if if you make it sound enticing and and do all of that. And there are a lot of people that are gonna probably bring back the old ambassador programs when I was in a cigar ambassador back in the day. Um, actually, uh, the gentleman that made me a cigar ambassador 
uh, is now your rep for the north for uh, for, for the northeast. So uh, the, uh, that's how far back we go, right? Wow. He's now a rep for, for for your company, and so um, you know it, it, it's one of those things where you know people are going to be having herfs at their bodega or garage or a local club or a golf club or sporting, you know, things you can do with a cigar, fishing club, disc golf, regular golf. You know, uh, you know, I'm not one of those, you know, I golf a lot. I don't tell people that like golf is a sport. It's an activity <laughs> to me. It's like the cigar shop. Only I get to walk around. It's cool. You know what I mean? Are you, are you <laughs> you know, about, you know, it's like a rolling cigar shop. I, I really dig golf, you know, but you know, it, 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 I think it's going to change and I think it is going to be for the better for sure. We have a couple more minutes. Yeah. Drew, do you have a couple more questions? No, I was just going to ask the, uh, Bradley. How's, how's pops? How's dad? He's doing well. Um, yeah. And I think he's excited um, for all this to <clears throat> hopefully be over. Uh, we yeah. got back into the office on Thursday last week. Um, so we were out for about a month, and the reps on the road are still st stuck at home at the moment. Um, yeah. But he's good. He's excited. And um, for the for Kintsugi to come out and you know maybe some other Alec Bradley projects, um, he's really looking forward to the next few months. Yeah, yeah. I'm nice. sure you guys, you know, you, uh, for you to be in this industry, you got to be somewhat of a of a social butterfly, right? You gotta you you want to get out there, and and the one thing COVID is making us do is stay home, you know. <laughs> so yeah. it, it, um, it, it, I'm sure he might be uh, chomping at the bit to get out there, see the people, work on some projects, and doing that because kind of like myself, right? If I'm not working on a project, I'm, I don't think I'm making money, right? So I got, I'm always constantly moving and talking to people, even though it's done out of the comfort of my own home now, you know, I'm trying to, to find that workspace and, and, and keep that business moving for myself. And, you know, uh, certainly, uh, I'm sure that, uh, you guys can't wait to get back to work and, and have your reps back on the road and, mm. you know, get some demand orders coming in, start moving some inventory. Uh, yeah, I think absolutely. we're, we're all looking forward to that. I love the creativity of you guys when you, when you, you've taken time to define your, the three brands that, that we spoke about today. Uh, how, um, how do I want to put this? How eager are you to get to brand six, seven, and eight. And I'm just making those numbers up because you have three. Like, like, is this like a, like a, a project where are you guys thinking that far out now business wise? Like, I know it could take a couple of years and all of that stuff, but like, are you guys starting to, to start that? Right. Because any great business owner, especially in this industry, you got to be like way ahead of the demand for your product, right. In order for you to push product. So have you guys began the thought of what brand six, seven and eight are going to look like? What types of things like what, what, what types of tobaccos excite the both of you that you think you would pass on to us as the consumers? Yeah, so I think so for me, I'm sorry, Brad, you mind if I go? Uh, yeah, go for it. So for Alex me, ready. I he's like, little... yeah, man, let's go. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. For me, I think I'm a little bit more eager th than Bradley to get more brands on the market. Just because when I look at Alec and Bradley as a company, you can't have a company with two lines. And currently, that's what we have. We have two lines on the shelf. It doesn't make for, you know, for a, a brand or a company. So I'm, I'm definitely looking forward at brands six, seven, and eight that we want to launch. And um, you were saying in terms of tobacco, I mean, there's, there's a bunch of different types of tobacco that we want to play with right now. And Bradley and I have honestly just been discussing which ones we want to tackle first based off what we can get our hands on. And we are extremely passionate when it comes to the tobacco and we love, ex you know, experimenting and exploring and testing our palate to see what we can do. Um, so far, the only thing that's kind of been outside our range a little bit is using Dominican tobacco, which really isn't a huge stretch. But there's definitely a bunch of different things out there that we want to we want to play with. Yeah. So, so Fascinating. Alec s said something important important there. He did. Um, he did. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> that that he's more eager to come out with brands, and there's some there's some truth to it, but it's it's just different. So. 
Am I excited about future projects? Absolutely. You know, I just the other day I came to to Alec and to Jonathan. I'm like, I have this name. This is the concept for it, and it's gonna be sick. And we're all, you know, talking about it, and it, we got further and further. And like, this is an awesome concept. But yeah. you know, we we have Kintsugi coming out. Um, we have Gatekeeper, and we have Blind Faith, and and I believe that we need to focus on on those three brands. You know, at this moment, we can't be jumping so far ahead to you know the fourth and fifth and sixth, seventh, eighth cigar until we have people smoking. You know, our our current stuff and enjoying it, and not just buying what's new, what's new, what's new. Yeah. We got to focus on our current portfolio before we start focusing on our sixth and seventh cigar. I don't yeah, think I, to consider what I we have would as a agree to disagree with you. <laughs> And, okay. and the reason being is because there is a group of cigar enthusiasts like us that are out there, and we walk into a humidor, and the first freaking question we ask the humidor manager is, what's, what's new? new? What's new? <laughs> what's new? <laughs> right? Because no, but I, we're, we're, we're stick chases. Uh, it, it, it's yeah. a culture. you build Because if you produced, in my mind, you produce something that is a go-to stick for me which is the blind faith. No doubt about it. It's go-to stick for me. And I don't say that to a lot of interviewees. I tell them, ah, it's not my palate, but I know it sells very well. You're going to do great in the industry, you know, but you know, I, I want, I'm ex- the, one of the very first things I said to Jonathan from your organization was I can't wait for them to come up with six, seven and eight, because that's really going to define them and separate them. Because uh, because of who your father is, it is what it is. You know, I got, you got, so, I got a question. But, I got a question. Alec, oh, go ahead. Yep. So so, what are some of your go to cigars? Something that you never get tired of. That's a great question. Uh, before I answer that, and I'm not postponing it. Okay. Uh, Alec, I want Alec brought <laughs> up a great concept, and I wanna I want you guys to really have this hit home. Alec said, "My brother and I." are playing with blends and we're anticipating the yeah. growth. And that tells me as a consumer, you you guys are having fun. And that is so needed in the industry from cigar so, owners. I, I interview, so. well, we, I say I, Drew and I and Pasto Yigi's guests have interviewed so many people and they have not have used the words we're playing with brands, blends. It's experimenting. We're trying mm-hmm. to figure out, and and I'm quoting, right? What consumers like, what's gonna sell, how we're gonna pivot. We're gonna. You guys are having fun, and I think at because of your entry level to the business and your years of expectation of life in the business is is greater than some other cigar owners because of your age having mm-hmm. fun is key yeah i'd agree so so i, I, I yeah, hats off for you guys for doing that i think that's super cool now go to <laughs> blends i know the story geeks listeners are rolling their eyes because they know what's going to happen <laughs> i cannot i cannot say a stogie geeks episode without using the word tatuaje or viaje <laughs> perfect so that yeah, being great. said my my number one go to stick is the Tuahe Pork Tenderloin. Has been, been for years. I've been addicted to that stick. I have Story Geeks listeners saying I can't find this stick. I tell them I know. <laughs> it drives me crazy. It's a super cool stick. I love the size. I love the packaging behind it. I love the, 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 the flavor profile. It's such a flavorful, leathery stick. If you were to look up leather component 101, that's the stick for me. I love Tatuaje. I love Davidoff, right? Um, I'm a big fan of Davidoff. I think that that company is on its own planet sometimes, um, mm-hmm. but they do everything right when it comes to uh, cigar, other than how they treat the brick and mortars who are not into the entry level thing. I don't like the whole buy in at this concept and you got to have this level and it's got to be in a separate humor. I get the whole. Scheme of things, but you know, um, that bothers me from a brick and mortar because it denies the consumer the privilege. You know, here you sell, tell, well, if I want a Davidoff and I can only go to three shops in Rhode Island, by the way, 
if I were if I wanted a premium cigar, I can go to 38 shops in Rhode Island. And I don't know mm-hmm. if you guys ever been to Rhode Island, but without traffic, you can drive through it. It's just like Delaware. You can drive through it in like 30 minutes. Well, if you're doing the speed limit, 40 minutes. But, you know, you, <laughs> so I'm kind of painting a visual for you. Cigar shops are like Dunkin' Donuts for us here. They're on every corner. But if I want to yeah. dab it off, I can only go to three. And and I have a group of friends that don't follow Stogie Geeks, but have followed me from being in a cigar shop and, and, and just the, they're my close friends. And I'm like, yeah, man. I have a hankering for a Davidoff. Like, oh, we're going to this. They know where we're going. I don't even mm-hmm. have to tell them the shop. Okay, I'll meet you there. I'll meet you there after work. Bing, bang, boom. Because they're like, yeah, having a Davidoff doesn't suck. There you go. The Twahe Pork Tenderloin for me. I love the Viaje series. I love the creativity of Viaje uh, exactly. when they were out, when they were hot for sure um, there. Did you grab uh, a box those of definitely, the, excuse the re-release me? of the – did you grab a box of the re-release of the Oro, uh, Oro Reserva? Um, I didn't grab a box, no, but they were because you know they they kind of like two at a time and 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 go that oh. there. But yeah, they. Wait, are you talking about from Davidoff? No, 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 from Viaje. Oh, from, from Viaje. Viaje. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought you were talking about the the, the, the Davidoff Oro for like five hundred dollars or whatever. Oh no, 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 the, no, no, no. The, no. You know, That's yeah. Crazy. That's crazy. You know, I, <laughs> there's a local <laughs> retailer who puts cigars in a aging room, and this word comes from. One of my dear friends, uh, he's like, yeah, he goes, I walked in and I wanted to buy a box of the year of the whatever, rat, rooster, whatever. He's like, no, I can only sell you two. He's like, dude, I want to buy a box. He's like, no, nah, I can only sell you two. He's like, he freaking taunts me. He taunts me with those cigars and then he only opens up the humidor off of freaking this, that, that. But, but you know something? That's his speed. He's doing well. What are you going to do? You know what I mean? That, that's what he yeah. does. He, uh, his words, not mine. He taunts his customers with cigars that they can't purchase. That's why there's a high demand for him. I don't know. You know, um, go to realistic go to's besides getting off the Davidoff and the pork tenderloin kick. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been into the um, Mike Bellity stuff, the MLB Cigar Ventures stuff, the uh, Islero and the David P. Ehrlich. Uh, the Blind Faith is certainly in that rotation uh, for sure. Uh, when I got a Project 40, I called your rep, and I think I emailed Jonathan, or I talked to Jonathan post that um, from your organization. I was like, dude, you're onto something with, with, with that stick, for sure. Uh, I'm digging the Project 40. The Robusto size does it for me. I'm kind of like a smaller ring gauge size. I'd rather have three Robustos in a day than mm. some of the bigger uh, stuff there. Uh, other brands, uh, I'm certainly a fan of uh, E.P. Carrillo. Uh, Paul, yeah. uh, Paul Azadorian, founder of Story Geeks, loves Ernesto's stuff for sure. Uh, E.P. Carrillo, I love his short run series. So we have boxes of the short run series 2013, 2015 um, there. Those are super cool sticks uh, to get. Um, if you are a Stogie Geek and you're listening to this, you call your local brick and mortar, see if they have them. Cause I don't want to send you on a, a wild goose chase, but I love the short run stuff, uh, there. I love the Lito Gomez stuff. Super cool. The, 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 the cabinet stuff mm-hmm. that Lito Gomez, uh, puts out for sure. Um, I'm intrigued with this, uh, and, and I'm, I don't really get super excited about this brand anymore, but the Romeo and Juliet are passion that's coming out. They've done mm. such a great job in their press release and sending it to me. I'm like ready to like buy a box unseen. I don't know wow. why. I just, I was like, that's weird, right? Cause I'm, uh, you know, uh, I'm interested in Romeo and Juliet to how they're going to recover from the Nicaraguan project. Uh, I don't think that a lot of consumers, there wasn't really a warm welcome. I think yeah. one of the reasons being for that is because people have been conditioned to smoke Romeo and Juliettas for years. And then when they came out with the Nicaraguan blend, they're like, oh, oh boy. But I bet you if they took the wrapper off and did a blind tasting, I think that it would get better results, my opinion, because, yeah. you know, uh, that there too. But that Lito Gomez cabinet is like super cool. And there's a cigar shop, which is also my pipe tobacco client. Um, they actually have two separate businesses within the same business, and he has those uh, uh, Lito Gomez cabinets. And I'm like, you got any more of those in the back? Those are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So something that I was trying to get at, which I, I honestly, you, you stumped me, was I was hoping <laughs> that your go-tos are stuff that have been around forever. Um, and, and like, trying to like, that. Like, like a Padron? Yeah, whether it's Padron or or maybe like an Ashton, you Ashton. know, classic mm-hmm. or VSG or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, something that's yeah. just uh, a staples in a lot of people's humidors uh, is that, you know, I don't want to, always be the the company that's what's new i, I want to like i want to be a staple that's yep. that's uh you know a point i was i was trying to get get at but uh you know you smoke a lot of yahe so you're always looking for you know something fun and creative and, and new and different which is something that i, I yeah. also look for as well because i'm I, I like yahe stuff quite a lot yeah like i mean there's like a bucket cigar coming out uh, Matt Booth retired and came back and and you know did a project and all of that. I, I, I like stories like that. As far as yeah. classic facings, I mean, I mean, I I do love the Padron. It's got to be the Padron Anniversario something or other. Uh, I do like those. See, those are readily available in our Stogie Geeks humidor. So there have been many times where, realistically speaking, when it comes to Padron, I don't really you know seek them out because they're readily available in our we have a huge humidor in the studio god i miss the studio uh <laughs> anyway <laughs> you know um you know so and, and and where i work on a nine to five daily job i work in this out of the stogie geek studio which is attached suite wise uh in the same building as the havana cigar club uh it's a local cigar cl- shop here and so I do get a lot of the, the 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 classic faces for sure. I love the like the La Aurora series that uh, the the Preferito series that have, have come came out with them. I like them uh, they there too. I do like Padron. Uh, what was your oh the Ashtons? Uh, honestly, yeah. Ashton. I liked Ashtons. Every Ashton I smoke, even the San Cristobal. Like the first half, I'm like, oh my god! Like I gotta really pay attention to these more. The one thing that, to my palate, to be honest with you, is just like to me, they all end the same. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. and right, you guys don't have to go on record. Finish. Believe me, I've gone on record, which is probably why Ashton uh, and AJ Fernandez won't sponsor the show. It's all good, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, it, it just it's just I love it's just you, the AJ. Way it's just the way it goes, you know what I mean? Like, you know, to to me, they 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 kind of all end the same with the yeah. Ashtons. Like that ESG, I I have that. I'm like, oh my god, that's a great stick. But if you if you were towards the end, you're like, ah, it kind of flattens out, you know. I do like yeah. the Illusions. This morning, I had a Holy Lancero Candela mm-hmm. by yeah. by Illusion. That's a freaking awesome stick. If you want to check out a really cool Illusion, I don't know if he still makes it anymore, um, but if you can find him, it's called, I think it's just called 33, and maybe it's like 33 Ninfa, but it's a 33 ring gauge, um, and it's a very, very simple cigar, but they're these little short smokes, and they're fantastic. You bought mm-hmm. me a box of those, man. Those are good. Yeah. Yeah. So sorry I stumped you. I mean, I, I, I do yeah, like the classic stuff. It's no just, problem. it's just, it's, it's all, it's just, it's, it's really at, at our disposal because they ship it to us or they give a press release and people are, you know, we're, we're always getting sticks shipped, uh, to Stogie Geeks. I love the companies, the, the, the more, I don't want to say more established companies, but I always tell them like do an attention Joe box and do an attention <laughs> Paul box. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because they come in, some some of the ones just ship it to Stogie Geeks and I open it and I split them with 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 Paul, the original owner. Cause you gotta keep in mind, like like I work pre-COVID, obviously, in the Stogie Geek studio, which does seven other podcasts in cybersecurity. And Paul's always come coming out and saying, dude, I ordered these online. You gotta you got you know, have you tried this yet? Have you not tried this yet? And so we're always having those those offline conversations. Drew and I have offline conversations a lot uh, about stuff because um, locally in his realm, I've been into the um, uh, Rojas stuff there too. Mm. Uh, Noel Rojas, uh, super cool stuff there too. But but I do like some of the classic faces. I'm all over the map. To I me, to me, moral, to me, moral of the story is come out with more cigars. 
That's the moral yes. of the story, Brad. Let's <laughs> honestly, <laughs> honestly, like, like I could, I could do an APB of Stogie Geeks listeners who listen to this. Email me at joehstogiegeeks.com and just tell me if you're in column A where you like to smoke the same old stuff or do you think Alec and Bradley should be concentrating on six, seven, and eight or six and seven sticks? And I will compile that results and survey to you, and I will email it to the both of you, and I guarantee you I would win all day. Yeah, of course. People <laughs> always you. want what's new. Yeah, I, I'm with Bradley. What he said earlier, you know, I, what I like as a consumer on the – now I'm going back to the consumer side – is that, you know – the cigar, you know, the, the the lines that they have offerings now and the new one that's coming out, uh, it builds momentum and it builds anticipation, and I like that. And a lot of and a lot of our listeners, you know, from what I can tell, on the uh, on the YouTube page, you know, it's it's awesome because there is a there is a there is a point sometimes. And I think uh, early last year I was going through this where there were just so many new cigars coming out pre uh, PCA or whatever it was IPCPR. Uh, there was a lot of stuff coming out and. You know, to get to everything and just kind of be, you know, give it a fair assessment uh, on, you know, on what we do. Uh, you know, it, it was just a lot. You know, there's a lot there. And some of the stuff we have, we still have not gotten to. So when you hear something that's a familiar brand and a familiar following, then, you know, you, you get to definitely uh, consider those uh, as they come along. And, you know, like I said, you uh, for me, you know, it builds anticipation and, uh, you know, I can't wait to get the Kintsugi for sure. And, and enjoy that and share my thoughts on that. Um, I just want to ask you guys a question. Uh, can I? Would you guys be willing to take a, a, a question from a, a YouTuber who's on live yeah, with us? Of course. Uh, yeah, are you okay. doing that at the same time, Drew? Oh, yeah. Come you on. always one-up me. Drew has oh, always on. one up to me with, with <laughs> now he did his homework. It blend. Go ahead. Well, <laughs> I'm well, just sitting here is... smoking a cigar, enjoying talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we got we got a pretty good uh, Facebook uh, thread going on here. So, first of all, uh, Chip wants me to wants you to know that he's digging the combo Magnum PI '70s porn stash and yeah. you know shirt. <laughs> 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 so his question to you guys was uh, is basically, you know, are you guys? It's a two part question. So two questions: Will you guys ever branch off? to the extent of having separate booths at the shows from AB or will you guys hold on one second or will you guys be together? And then the second question, follow-up question to that, do you still work on AB products or are you focusing on A and B products? Uh, is, is this is a no way to infer what in fear that one is better than the other. He's just curious. How about Alec? I'll take question when you take question too. Perfect. So, in terms wow, you of guys the, get along on this show. You should come here more often. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are, are are our counselors. You know, you guys there are bringing you. us closer together. There you go. Uh, nice. But I would say that uh, in terms of the booth, I don't see us branching off and having separate booths. Um, you know, we're we're a family, and, and family's got to stick together. So, um, yeah. you know, we gotta we gotta do this all together, and and I don't see that that changing. Oh, nice. group hug, man. That's awesome. Papa Bear. Pop, pop, Papa Bear better give you a hug when he sees you. <laughs> hey, I love that logo. You know, distance that, thing. We can't be given hugs, uh, man. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> uh, I like and, the logo. And, so. uh, question two was, do we, do we still work on uh, Alec Bradley Project also, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, we absolutely do. Before, I'm smoking a Gatekeeper Corona right now. But what I was smoking before that was a blend that I worked on down at the factory that is potentially going to be the new Alex, the new, the next new Alec Bradley release. So even though we have the Alec and Bradley stuff that we focus on, um, just, you know, amongst the two of us, we are constantly and always in everything on Alec Bradley all day, every day. It, that's never going to change. That's, you know, the core company, that's, that's, you know, who we work for essentially. Ladies. And yeah. although, you know, even though we do have Alec and Bradley, we are fully in everything on uh, Alec Bradley. Mm. That's a good question. Yeah. That's a, why not? What are you going to do when you guys take over the business when Papa Bear wants to retire? You know exactly. what I mean? You, know, he's, well, you guys would be the next logical choice. I mean, we'll figure you know. it out when we get there. That's yeah, what I, that's Alec, right. and, Alec and Bradley was really, um, 
was two things. One, for us to identify ourselves, and two, was for us to be able to come out with the projects and the blends that we wanted to come out with without any influence from my father. So that's, yeah. that's why we did that. All right. We got to leave this interview with that. How did that conversation go down? Love your help, but <laughs> we really <laughs> want to stand on our own. Because cause, cause my, my, my father passed uh, in 2015 and had a great relationship with my father. He's retired military. He was a tough old bastard, right? Yep. Freaking, um, how did that conversation go down? What, like, did, did he know you guys were always like, cause it's kind of a defiant conversation, you know, a parent might take it as, well, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, how, how did that all go down? That's a great well, thing you brought up, Alec. Yeah, that was a good question. Um, it, it went actually a lot better than you would think. Um, oh. you know, our, our father is our mentor. That's, that's who we look up to and, and who we are constantly asking questions. Uh, but something that's always been, common with Alec and I growing up is that he's always let us make our own mistakes and not saying that this is a mistake, but it's an experience and it's, and it's a, a challenging task that we, w we wanted to put upon ourselves. We wanted to challenge ourselves. And he saw that as us, as us trying as hard as we can to, to, you know, work our hardest and be ourselves. So he was uh, very accepting of the idea and supported us 100%. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's, that's uh, gotta, no, that's got to feel great, too. I mean, coming from, you know, I mean, passing the baton, you know, as I was telling Joe earlier before you guys came on, it was like, you know, they're, you know, they've been they've been passed the baton. And and obviously the relationships between your father and the two uh, and, and everybody else that's working, in, you know, as a cohesive unit uh, is, I mean, full support, full on. You can tell you can see that. Yeah. Bradley left out one caveat that was a part of all this, though. My father said he's all about it. He loves the idea. But you guys, are because I'm not a part of it, you guys are paying for your own production. Mm. <laughs> so uh, that, that was a caveat. Well, you know, oh, yeah. honestly, dependency, dependency is slavery. And I think it's from, <laughs> from my relationship with, with, with my mom and, 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 and parental units me and my brother are different people, right? For sure. Uh, and I, I'm always like, I got to figure it out myself. I got to figure it out myself. I got to figure it out myself because it's just the values of the parents are slightly different. You know what I mean? I, I, I like to think of myself as an entrepreneur. I mean, I've been on my own since 2004 when I left corporate and then I, uh, worked in different capacities. And even now it's like, it's, it's a gig economy. Where, you know, you got my business, Stogie Geek Security Weekly, it all blends all together. Okay, cool. And and it's like it's just a, it just works for me, right? I'm able to 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 keep that out and do everything I love. Like I love helping out my local customers that I help out for my business. I love what we do in the cybersecurity field. Super cool, interesting stuff that we do. These companies and products that they come out with are fascinating. And then Stogie Geeks, I mean, speaks for itself. I mean, I get to speak to you guys or, 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 or different versions of you guys every week and, 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 and hear stories. And uh, it's super cool, you know. And, and I wish you guys much success uh, right. there. So much. The next thing you got to do is get Lars Teetons on the show because <laughs> uh, I can't wait. I, I, I was a fan of Lars Teetons. I actually sold Lars Teetons cigars out of my shop way back in the day and had one of his metal skateboards. I skateboarded vert till I was 37. So, uh, wow. I woke up one day, I woke up one day, I was skateboarding vert. I was at a skateboarding park and I kick flipped the board and I handed it to a kid and I said, here you go. And he's like, why? Well, I'm done skating. He's like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, man, I'm done. I'm 37. You're like 12. Well, I'm done here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, awesome. and I never looked back and, and, you know, but haven't had one of those original lost T and skateboards from way back in the day. I, an interview put, putting him and me in the same room would be awesome. Having him and me in the same zoom room or whatever the heck this like, electronic extravaganza is called that Johnny <laughs> produces every week is it, it, it would, would be just as cool. I think him and I, I mean, we're both going to break out our guitars and sing and song. That's all I'm saying. I'm pretty. That's Bradley. You have one of those skateboards, right? 
Yeah, it's uh, it's somewhere in my office, but it was my father's. He has one of those metal decks uh, from back yeah. in the day. Yeah. Wow. By the way, uh, doing a board side with the metal <laughs> skateboard with sex wax should be frowned upon when when <laughs> when you're in your twenties. That's all I gotta say, man. <laughs> like you know, I was like, oh, wood is a lot slower. <laughs> it's a lot more flexible you know what i mean but anyway yeah super cool super cool. cool uh um definitely have jonathan add us to your press release uh yeah. where you guys oh. have any press releases that you want to get out and all of that stuff don't be a stranger to the stogie geek show uh as well i i believe me i've been following you guys in the background since i found out about you guys in in, in september and i'm looking forward to blend six seven and eight Awesome. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. 2021, 20, 30, you know, you got to get up there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Definitely. Me, um, after restrictions get lifted and all of that stuff, love to have you guys come back, you know, within the next 90 days or so. We certainly can do a part two of this. I have so many more business questions to ask you guys and all of that stuff. But, um, you know, uh, contrary to belief, People listen to podcasts if they're at a certain time frame uh, from what I was told. Now, if you guys showed up on Stogie Geek seven years ago, episodes were four or five hours at a crack. You know what I mean? Oh, sure. Yeah. That's... <laughs> <laughs> but we're under these new restrictions so that, you know, we can be competitive in the market and all of that stuff. I don't know. So those are not my those are not my decisions. I would keep talking to you guys for another four hours for sure. You know, so it's don't be a stranger to Stogie days. Geeks. Yeah, don't be a stranger for Stogie Geeks. Keep in touch. I wish you guys ultimate success, and thank, thank you. you for your time. Thank you guys for having us. Really yeah, appreciate absolutely. it. Yeah, absolutely. Joe, Joey, Stogie Geeks, we're going to – Absolutely. Stogie Geeks, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we got the sticks of the week. Stay tuned. <laughs> 